Good morning all. So today I am going to discuss about quantum dynamics. Uh, I feel uh, all of you will be very familiar with the classical dynamics. Okay. So if you are not very aware about uh, classical dynamics, I will give a, a rough uh, estimate of uh, what is in the classical dynamics and thereafter I will move to the quantum dynamics. So I will give a rough picture of classical dynamics. So first of all dynamics, so whether it is a classical or quantum mechanical, the dynamics has two parts. The two parts means, so the first part is the dynamics should define what are the variables or parameters which defines the state of the system. So definition of state is the first part of dynamics and second thing is how the state of the system evolves with time. So the time evolution of the system or time evolution of the state. So obviously the time evolution of the system or the state will define by using a differential equation and in short I will call it as an equation of motion. So these are the main part of any dynamics so whether you are going uh, for classical dynamics or quantum dynamics it should uh, come rise these two things. Okay. So if you look at an example if you go for a classical mechanics problem the state of the system usually by using uh, position and momentum. Okay. And the equation of motion which would give the time evolution of the state is simply the Newton's second law. Okay. Now, uh, why this dynamics is important to us? Okay. So, the dynamics will give the time evolution of the system that I already mentioned. Okay. So, once you know the state of the system that may be the initial state of the system and the equation of motion, by solving the equation of motion, we can know about the entire details of the system. You can know the past of the system, you can know the future of the system. So, that is the importance of the equation of motion. So, we will get to know the complete information of the system if you know the, the state and the equation of motion. Okay. Now, in the contracts, when you are going to quantum mechanics, what are the difference? Okay. So, if you are going to quantum mechanics, the state of the system is not position or momentum. You might have been noticed about the uncertainty principle. We know that uh, we cannot measure the position momentum simultaneously with complete accuracy. So the position momentum cannot be taken as the state of the system in quantum mechanics. So which will be the state of the system? So that we already discussed when we were discussing about the postulates of quantum mechanics. That is the state of the system is represented by a vector in Hilbert space is a vector. So, it is a very abstract quantity, it is a mathematical quantity, it is not a physical quantity, it is a mathematical quantity and it cannot be observed, the state of the system cannot be observed. Okay. So, in quantum mechanics, which is observable quantity, so observable quantity is an expectation value. So, the usually the thing is, we should have the equation of motion in terms of the observable quantities. So, in case of classical mechanics, there is no problem because the position and momentum are the states which are directly observable and we can write the equation of motion in terms of this. There is no issue. But when you are going to quantum mechanics, the state which is a vector in Hilbert space which is an abstract uh, uh, entity and we cannot write an equation of motion in terms directly on the state. Okay. So, you go back to the problem okay so which is the observable quantity in quantum mechanics okay so then we will come to know that the expectation value of an operator is observed okay suppose the state of the system if you are represented by the h psi and the operator represent that is uh, a cap then the expectation value you can write this way 
is an inner product of the operator on the state side. So, this is the expectation value and this is directly observable quantity not the state side directly. So, it would be convenient if you write the equation of motion in terms of the expectation value rather than the state vector. Okay. Now, now the problem becomes slightly more complicated because if you look at the expectation value there are two quantities one is a state vector and other one is the operator itself ok. So, then which quantity will would evolve with time? So, there are different uh, approaches into it. So, there are basically three different approaches in quantum mechanics as we say ok. So, the and these are called the different pictures in quantum mechanics. The first one is the Schrodinger picture. So, the Schrodinger picture state that the state psi evolves with time and the operator A is independent on time. And there is just opposite approach which is called the Heisenberg picture and in Heisenberg picture the operator A evolves with time and the state psi is independent on time. And the third picture is a mix of these two which is called the interaction picture. And interaction picture both the operator and state evolves with time. Okay. So, the question is which quantity evolves with the time, which quantity evolves. So, there are two, three approaches. The first approach you can see the Schrodinger. The Schrodinger says or Schrodinger picture states the psi evolves with time. So, basically psi is a function of time and operator A is not a function of time. It is called Schrodinger picture. And the second picture is called Heisenberg picture. And in Heisenberg picture, the state psi, the vector psi is not a function of time, whereas the operator A is function of time. And the last picture is called the interaction picture. The interaction picture both the state psi and A is a function of time. Okay. Now, in this lecture, we will be focusing about the Heisenberg picture and that we will see in the next class.